What if I were to suggest that you play a key role in the awakening world? And that you are watching this because you have heard the call. We can start right now by opening our hearts and minds. Welcome to the awakening world. Namaste, everyone. Welcome to the Sacred Sunday edition of The Awakening World. I'm your host, Love Coach Scott Katamas, and I am brimming with joy because today we have two of my absolute favorite human beings of all time. Um, the twin ray are with us live, and we're going to go up close and personal, ask all those questions you've always wanted to ask them, uh, and hear about the amazing work that they're doing. We're going to get a beautiful, beautiful show with everybody, so I'm very excited about that. And Deborah Juicy is here. Our wonderful co-host, Deborah, is with us as well, and so um, it's going to be a very special day. I want to welcome all of our friends that are already in the Zoom room. I see so many of our regulars. And let us know where you are geographically. I'm sure the Twin Ray will especially enjoy seeing how far and wide our reach is. And I want to welcome everyone who's watching on Facebook. A big thanks to John and Summer Raymer. They are who run the Sign Network, which gets us out to over 100 Facebook groups and pages. So thank you, John and Summer. They were on the show Friday night. Um, I want to invite those of you who are watching on Facebook and also on Ellen Steinfeld's YouTube channel to join us live because when you come into the Zoom room, that's gonna give us the opportunity to really see your thoughts, your comments, even your questions. And uh, we have some really wonderful opportunity today, ask questions of the Twin Ray. So come on into our Zoom room. Come join the Global Peace Tribe. It's easy to do that. Just go to globalpeacetribe.com, globalpeacetribe.com and register. And when you click this link down here, that'll take you to the registration page. We do three shows every weekend. In fact, sometimes even more. So for example, these are some of the people that are on our show on a regular basis. On Friday night, we had a beautiful show um, enlightening our way together with Chief Phil Lane, John and Summer, and several other special guests attending a conference that Chief Phil was at. Uh, last night's show was beautiful, all about the spirit of Ubuntu, where we had several guests coming to us from Africa, and our co-hosts, Pato and Antoinette, and of course, this is our show today. So when you register, you're going to get access to all of our shows, the Zoom rooms to all of our shows, for the rest of the year, plus access to the replays, which we send out every week, every Monday. So come join the Global Peace Tribe. We're going to be with the Twin Ray and Deborah in just a moment, but we always like to start with music. And our beautiful, beloved brother, Omashar, is here to kind of open our hearts even more widely. I see people, Jennifer is applauding for you, Omashar. People are applauding, people are excited. Take it away, brother. Thank you. 
whose tale I tell it has no ending I'd like you to know we are all on an incredible journey a traveling show I've been looking at you in your homelands watching you grow Weaving light into creation A heavenly glow I have been inside you for so long I will be with you forever Come with me, let's spiral through the stars part of you has always remembered since the beginning of time through your hearts you felt my presence a knowing sublime I've been guiding you beyond your perception forever your friend Take some time and get to know me I'll welcome you home I'll welcome you home I have been inside you for so long I will be with you forever Come with me, let's spiral we have been inside you for so long we will be with you forever we'll come with you and spiral through the stars <laughs> Thank you so much, Omar Shar. That was beautiful. It's a it's a trip playing that song because it's such a high vibe, and uh, and um, what I'm finding is as I rise in vibration, everything in me which fears not showing up shows up. And halfway through playing that song, it came and whacked me off my stool, and I didn't even remember the chords. And I thought, hang on a minute, I'm just going to sing and find the chords again. And uh, <laughs> so I'm just fessing up about my inner workings of uh, an evolving human beaming aloha and namaste oh, well, thank you so much and yeah it's it's a high vibe when the twin ray are with us in presence um and i'm really excited because along with the high vibe we've got deborah juicy and for anyone who doesn't know uh deborah is who co-created the 
Global Peace Tribe um, along with me. And she is truly all about Ascension. Um, we co-hosted 90 shows together uh, back in the Saturday Night Alive for the Global Peace Tribe days, which got all of this started. She's an extraordinary woman. And Deborah, welcome back to the Awakening World. Yeah, great to be here. Great to see everyone. So glad that Scott has continued what we started um, because these are really important times. And this is a time for all, all of us to gather and really share this high level information. We can do that now. Um, what's currently happened has really connected us all on the internet. So we can share this really high level information about what's happening. And yeah, for me, the ascension, at least that coins what's happening now. As we know, this is a really amazing time. That's what this show is based on. That's why we're all gathering. And uh, for me, it was 2012 that really got me seeing that everything I'd been working on up to now was really for this accelerated spiritual time that's happening now, which we call ascension in a very kind of broad, open way. But it's really everything in the world, all life plans, all, all life, all sectors of the universe is all up leveling now and that's so that's why we're so lucky to be incarnated here now and have the grace of being able to experience that and um, we're talking about a planetary ascension that's what's so special about these times is it's not just one ascended being going here and there popping popping but we really have the um, opportunity for all life forms for all of us to ascend and with that, that's why uh, I'm a connoisseur of the Ascension and major Ascension teachers. And there's many now that are just speaking so much truth and being so helpful. And it's so amazing because back in the ancient days, you'd have to go into the mystery schools and commit yourself to um, a long practice of learning various things. But at this time, this information is available us to us now if we're open for it and we're ready for it. So yes, I'm a connoisseur of the Ascension teachers and truly for me, the twin Ray is one of the top Ascension teachers on the planet now. Scott and I had the benefit of being able to spend some time with them personally and knowing them for almost two years now. And um, the wisdom that they share is so deep on all spectrums, not just what we call Ascension, but all levels of life that has you be and exist and manifest in life at your fullest potential, um, but also the depth of ancient wisdom and also seeing to the future of where we're going with all this. And another thing that's so special about them is just their state of being. They live and breathe this a thousand percent. They have incarnated in the planet now for the purpose of being our guides and showing us the way. And they've had many incredible past lives that have prepared them for this and they're very conscious about their mission and that this is what they do 24 hours and more per day this is their their breath their love and um and love <laughs> that's the thing about them they live in the love frequency all the time they have mastered knowing that that's where we're all going that that's what this is about. And if you can master the love frequency and live from that, no matter what's going on in your life, and there's a lot going on for all of us, that's one of the keys. And there are examples to that. So that's what I love about them. They're not just talking and learning in the mind. It is full presence and being. So, um, and when they came on to Saturday Night Alive and Awakening World, we just get little snippets of them. We don't see their whole amazingness of their history and what they have to share now and what they're going to be sharing. So I really wanted to inspire this deep, up close and personal drop in with them. So you all could get to know them like uh, Scott and I have and why we appreciate them so much. So uh, that's why we're hosting this is to really understand the depth of who they are and what they have to offer us with right now, which is so amazing for these times. So Thank you, beloved Deborah. Thank you so much. That was just so beautiful. You're so authentic with the way you share and uh, and 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 your truth is is so complete. And we are so grateful that you have 
inspire this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Deborah, you said it all really. Um, so I, I want to get right to people having an opportunity to experience these beautiful beings. Um, and so I'm uh, wondering if the two of you would like to just lead any kind of a dropping in and a chance to even drop in deeper with you. Yes, absolutely. We'll be honored to do a little drop in transmission and centering into the love frequency. <laughs> so just closing your eyes and taking a deep breath into the center of your heart. Just allow yourself to release any tension, neck and the shoulders just soften, softening into this moment, softening into the presence of being. As you take a deep breath into the center of your heart, just allow yourself to call forth the light, very center your heart. The unborn light, divine spark. And with every breath, just see, sense, or perceive, or even imagine that light encompassing the entirety of your heart and overflowing from your heart to every cell in your body, biology. Allow yourself to feel that as you breathe, every cell breathes together in the symphony that we call life. And softening, relaxing into that breath. Softening yourself allows you to feel great, allows you to experience deeper, allows you to expand further, to feel more love, to know thyself at the depths and core of your being. The breath is life. It is the breath of all livingness that connects all things seen and unseen. See the beauty, the light, the wonder that is here and available for you right now. Allow your eye, your inner eye to open in this moment more than it ever has before. And today, allow yourself to receive at the depths of your being all that shall be shared and allow another part of you to awaken in reverence for the sacred universe and for the great potential that is sometimes overlooked every day. Open your heart now wider than it's ever been to presence this space and allow this grace to unfold in your heart and in your own sacred space, wherever you may be. Just 
as all beings tuning into this moment, it's a point of light, creating a tapestry of unity and harmony. May your light shine to unbounded levels to inspire all and to support all life. As we always say, love all, serve yeah. all. Oh. May the love of the light that you are serve all as that light. And may we always be that light reflecting your light right back Blessed be. Blessed be. Just inviting us to savor that space that you've created and thank you so much for how you are really lighting and leading the way for this awakening world Deborah yeah so beautiful and um, this is really a bottom line this this energy this frequency that we feel now and love to keep that through the whole interview but I want to understand um, from your perspective what is really going on now what is the opportunity of ascension why are we incarnate here and of course we could go on for days on this conversation but just um, a little information of course people can continue to study with you and you talk about this all the time but what's really the opportunity for all of us here? What's going on? Where? What are we looking forward to? And how the, can this assist us in our personal life, in our divine mission that we came for, and in, in our awareness, and all of that? Beautiful. Thank you, beloved Tempra. The ascension, the, the global ascension, we're in an ascension cycle. And what that means there's multi levels to this. So we could say it's multifactorial. There's a personal ascension. There's a collective ascension for humanity and other species. There's also a planetary ascension for our own planets, um, Gaia, Earth. There's also a ascension of our localized solar system, what's occurring as we're shifting out of the bandwidth um, that it's been traveling through for some time within our localized galaxy the milky way and the, and the milky way is going through another cycle of of ascension as well and then within our supercluster, within our sort of localized universe of, of lania okay. so you, we can see that there's cycles within cycles within cycles within cycles and so what's happening is people are becoming aware of this to certain degrees people are switching on and and right now you know, there's there's a lot of astrological influences as we're shifting guard, we're changing from one age of time, what was historically known as the Piscean Age, and we've moved into the announcement, into the Aquarian Age. And the announcement was the very clear symbols in the sky being Jupiter and Saturn, marking that alignment in the house of Aquarius during the winter solstice in the northern hemisphere or the summer solstice in the uh, in the exactly. southern hemisphere at December 21, where it marked that heralding. And the only time that that's occurred was the last 2,000 years. And that happens every 2,000 years where these social planets, these planetary influences that represent society and the, the internal workings of society, meaning Saturn, which is the governance and the, the sort of the structured and also the control system, so to speak, and Jupiter, the expansion, Jupiter is the higher wisdom, the freedom. There's always been this tug of war between this sort of repression and this freedom that, that people are always striving for. Mm -hmm. And so these two social planets dedicated that announcement at this specific time. And it's the Bethlehem star. That's that very sacred time. So 
that happened in 2020. But three years prior to that, we also had a very significant event where in December of 2017, there was this alignment that happened where the earth started coming out and our solar system started coming out of this sort of uh, plasmic cloud. It's a cloud that we're sort of protects us from these cosmic radiation that comes in. And cosmic radiation comes from a few different sources. They, they, sent, they come from the central core of galaxies, but they also come from the radiation of like when a star goes supernova. So if you can see a star just go lit up in the sky and it just transforms, similar to you know the awakening, right? The illumination that happens. At a, at a little star inside your own brain, known as the pineal gland, when that gets lit up. Um, but that happens at a seismic scale that generates a lot of power, a lot of energy, a lot of, a lot of plasmic energy. So if you can imagine that happening, not just to one star, but to a whole galaxy of stars, there's a lot of seismic energy. And we live in this torus, you know, a torus field that looks very much like an apple. You know, to be simply put, an apple, we, we live in that. We have a torus field of our hearts. We have a torus field. You, know, you look at the tree, how the trees, leaves sprawl out and how the roots, everything is this torsional field. Well, our galaxy, our sun, or the solar system, it's all within this torus field. So the torus field produces a lot of this cosmic radiation. Well, in 2017, we came out of these, these, this protective layer. And we started receiving... What that marks is a new 12,000 year cycle. That 12,000 year cycle then brings in this highly coherent plasmic waves that come through our atmosphere into the core of our earth and it, and it transmutes into what's known as gamma wave frequencies. That then creates this cymatic compulsion. Cymatics is the study of vibration creating imagery. So when you have a Petri dish, you have sand on it and you vibrate it, you see all these complex geometries and the higher the frequency, the higher the complex geometries that they come out, which is just beauty. It's the mm. beauty of nature. What's happening to our earth is this highly coherent frequency is turning up the dial. The very inner workings of our core, the, the iron crystalline core, the heart pulse of the earth, the frequencies just went up a few, a few notches. And so that frequency, which creates what we call ley lines or slow standing sound waves, which are these arcing currents that pulse out through the earth, the whole grid system of the structure of earth has gone through a metamorphosis. As a result of that, every human is a cell on the planet of earth. And you're also, your, your internal circuitry, your bio field, your aura, your toroidal field is being changed, is being adapted to this grid system. That's creating a lot of upheaval. A lot of people are having a lot of problems with changing the dial because of programming, emotions, conflicts. Well, of course, and imagine being those grains of sand being shaken up on a Petri dish. <laughs> what do you think that's going to do? That is the shakeup, but through that shakeup, the new geometries are able to be formed. Then what starts to happen is through, just as the sand, so does the water. The water is also going through this type of shakeup with the new geometries. And the water inside of the vessel is being changed, transformed, transmuted, really from one species almost to another altogether. And what is water? Water is memory. Water, water is, is water is also structure. So the unconscious mind, all the systems of one's causal perception of how you perceive reality, all of that's shifting. And so we can call this time a great purification. And really on the ascension path or an authentic spiritual path, purification is 98% of the journey. It's just yeah. purifying the mind, purifying the emotions, purifying all the belief systems that are limiting, that pertain to some imaginary character that is called an ego. All of that yeah. has to be shaken up to wake up, you know, go through the shake up to wake up. And, and that's what's occurring on a mass scale. 
And so the very frequency, there's perfect sound science that is demonstrated this, this process that's happening at a planetary level. And then there's obviously prophecies that have been speaking to this time, this very time that each one of you have incarnated into. It's, it's important to acknowledge this prophecy of purification. Many First Nation elders and tribes have been speaking about this story because they're charting the stars. They know the stars. So they know about the prophecies because their interaction with the stars and the beings that come from the stars communicate this to them. Every culture. Yeah beyond first nations have yeah a Ab prophecy absolutely every antiqual civilization egyptians sumerians mm -hmm. ancient greek the rigvedic uh, the, every sacred scripture whether it's east or west has always spoken to a time this new coming we're in a time of not revolution but revelation revelation and the time is yeah. right now yeah and it's all being revealed and so this this time of ascension what's occurring at a planetary level turning transforming at a universal level it's also happening at a very very personal level so everyone's going to that journey That's but right. and there's a lot of resistance yeah there can, many. there can be a lot of resistance it can be mm -hmm. intense you know and and it needs to sometimes be it can be intense it can be terrifying it can be confusing yeah there just isn't enough information on the planet. Even now, even as beloved Deborah has spoken about, you know, you used to have to go to the mystery schools to learn the information. Yes. And those containers are still very important. There's only so much information that can be given without those sacred containers without the induction and the spoken word right in presence mm. there's only so much and right now people are wanting to know the information but not everybody wants to be held and upheld in those kind of containers and thus only so much information will ever be able to be given and it's beautiful in that, that way that there is this availability availability right now mm -hmm. that there are many people that are tuning into the the unified field and receiving the downloads to then share so other people can come online you know and it, and it is communities you know communities have to come together to have that sacred connection to have that sacred field to mm -hmm. support that that journey it's not about the individual journey as deborah said as well it's about coming together in common unity and having a sangha and that's what our inspiration is our inspiration is to to serve all of the beings that wish to be served and um, that wish to to receive the support and the guidance and the container of love in order to go all the way all know, the way all the way and what that means the great the great claim whether it's a prophetic claim of an entire nation of an entire civilization for entire world of an entire planet entire universe whether it's just a single person the claim is that it's the end of suffering, that yeah. peace reigns supreme. And that's what everyone truly wants is this happiness. They just sometimes don't know how to go about it. And, and really... Or we even believe in it. Yeah. Or even believe in it. Even those we have seen, even those who pray with their entire being for such a thing, when peace is shown, when love is put in front of them, they might still resist it. They might not fully believe it because they can't quite yet see it within themselves. Mm -hmm. But that's the claim. The claim is, is yeah. that there is, there is a great transformation that transforms the way one perceives all of reality and as a result ends the polarity game of suffering. And, and integration. And you know, this is this is beautiful like that there's actually an opportunity for every single being to be free to truly be the freedom that you are and that's that's all we're here to sing sing the song of freedom <laughs> <laughs> i actually just wrote a song it sounds just like that <laughs> she did. Mm -hmm. that was an amazing summary of a very complex question um and i want to thank you for that and 
because we are up close and personal with you, there are so many people wanting to know about your personal history. And um, because it, it's, it's fascinating. And so again, it could be, you know, it's, it's, it'll be a movie someday, <laughs> probably. But we know. Um, <laughs> you are modeling for us what it's like to be a human being that awakens. And so would you be willing to share with us your, a little bit at least, a homeopathic dose, if you will, of your experience of coming into this world and then coming into the place where you are at this time? Absolutely. That's what we're here to do. Yes. yes. Would you like to begin? Would you like me to share a little bit about your story? <laughs> you can, Sure. So, you know, it's important to, to presence, you know, for example, Shekinah Ma, Shekinah Ma has a profound, profound journey and, and story. She's also known as a, a walk-in. So a walk-in essentially is a, the soul is sort of like the hard drive that holds all the memories, all the impressions, all the conditioning from every different lifetime. And so it's a, it's a sort of the sum total of your emotional body, your mental body, the astral body, and the causal body or the Akashic record, so to speak. And so it's, it's all sort of held within a soul matrix. And that, that soul is a part of your energetic field. And so Shekinah Ma, she went through a, a death uh, and resurrection process at the age of 33. I'd love for you to share that, my love. But just a yeah. presence that what happened is that that soul matrix left and a new, a new being entered. So her journey is quite recent, you know, even though this happens you know, over, a, over a decade now. But that that's it's it's very difficult for Shekinah Ma, as someone that has gone through a process that doesn't see the sameness of who a child was that had, you know, a teenage process and the 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 adult, the young, younger adult life and went through all these sort of processes where she sort of just came into a body, the, a new, the body that is she's now the new host of. And so that's, I just want to pre-frame that um, because it's important to to acknowledge uh, that process. And, and I had the good fortune to speak to her earth mother actually about from her witness. And we're speaking about someone that's just a beautiful, beautiful heart, but not, not fully would say aware of ascension, aware of the, the higher awakenings or aware of mm -hmm. sort of the spirituality. Everyone's spiritual to some degree, but this it wasn't, wasn't so much her calling card in this lifetime. But she's always been, you know, open, open-minded, um, but hasn't really had any mystical experiences. And so I asked her, you know, what was it like for you to really see your daughter go through this, this death process, where the, where the doctors literally said, rushed to hospital, and doctor said, you've got twenty minutes to live. You know, just you've got twenty minutes to live. Like that's that's huge. And then for a mother to hear that, and for even the being at that time you know to hear like you you're not, not gonna make ready. it and she was at peace she was ready she to... was complete mm. she looked up and said okay. yeah and so when i asked um Sh shikina ma's um earth mother about this it was she said that she was praying with rosary in hand and she was sort of sitting in the corner and sort of just so distraught. You can imagine, you know, the daughter that you've given birth to is on the death, on a deathbed. You know, it's pretty, pretty intense. And she was just rosary in hand and you know, sobbing. And then there was this, this moment where she was in this between state where she's awake and aware of the room, but sort of in a trance, but, you know, just she's she hadn't slept for days, um, so or p bits of sleep here and there, but wasn't wasn't really having a whole coherent sleep cycle. And she witnessed this being just descend straight into the room, wearing these white flowing robes, 
long hair, long beard, and descended before her daughter and with this very, very Intense. just focused, very sharp, very focused, just came down and placed it his hand out and a beam of light came out of his hands and went straight into the heart of her daughter laying on the, on the bed. And, and then he retracted, retracted the light and, and left. And I was amazed. I was like, you, you witnessed this? You, you saw this? This is, and she said, yes. And I'm like, what do you look like? And she started describing him and and she said, she looked at me and she said, it looks a little bit like you, but that's, that's too far for me to go. I, I'm, that's enough. And she sort of closed down there and I was like, yeah, that's, that's, that's a bit too, that's a bit too much for me to, to process or understand. But, but she was sort of like double taking and looking at me in that moment. And, and she was taken, you know, she was, she was really taken. She said that experience changed her life. And then a few hours later on 10, 10, Shakina Mara came in through the body and, and the body was resurrected and the whole hospital staff and everyone at the hospital you know, said that this was absolutely a miracle. Like she was the, she was a miracle child. She was a miracle one. And it was quite profound because a whole community, this happened in Miami, Florida, a whole community was around um, and, and sort of praying and, and chanting and it was it was a whole yogic sort of community around that was a part of this and it's it's you know it's so 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 profound to see this this type of miracle happen and everyone to witness this and what was interesting is after the experience isn't the the earth mum she she noticed that there's a, a complete difference like she didn't want to believe it but there was a complete difference like the way that Shakina would animate her talk her accent uh, how her posture would be um, just the way that she would interact was just completely opposite through time yeah and it wasn't right away but it was through time but she noticed a significant change and and she didn't she didn't sort of she just was happy to have her daughter back you know and and it was interesting you know when she was she spoke to Shakina Ma about, you know, you know, that about her own motherhood. And Shakina's response was, and now I'm your mother. <laughs> and and sees her as a as a spiritual child in that respect. And mm -hmm. there's a great honor as well, which is which was wonderful to witness the profound shift of how even Shakina's earth mother acknowledges and honors Shakina Ma as as the spiritual mother. And and even though she can't quite comprehend completely, even with that profound experience, but she can feel. But she can feel it. So I felt called to to, to share that from the the lens and the eyes of of Sh Shakina Ma's Earth Mother. Um, you know, just not mentioning her name, just for her own, her own appreciation. Fine. She likes to be quite private. So, yeah, that that's that's an in, a, a profound a profound profound experience that brought Shakina Ma into our world. And I'd love to hear, and I'm sure others would, you know, why why do you actually even come? It was predestined. It is written in the stars. It is written in the mapping of the astrology of the original body in its birth. And in the combined charts of my coming through on that day, along with that. And I heard the prayers, the cries of the children all across this world, all across the galaxies. I can still hear it very vividly when I tune in. This beautiful soul, this, this beautiful being, that gave up her life in order for me to come in was already a beautiful child of light. 
She had gifts, wonderful gifts. She had healing gifts even as a young, young child. And as a young, young child in her crib, we would stand around her and show her and teach her how to look at light and color, work with energy, play within the realms that she did so well. Perhaps her greatest challenge was that she lived one foot in this world as best as she could, even though she didn't really understand it. And another foot in the more ethereal worlds and lived in a way to try to balance those two things. And that was very, very challenging for her. So how do I explain that even though I'm here now, I was over lighting with other council members, her journey. That's a hard thing to explain. That's a hard thing for almost anyone to wrap their heads around. But through my entry, it was all about being here for the children of the light. It was all about being here to bring back a love on this planet that has been so deeply lost. I am deeply moved by the ability to be able to do that, to be able to bring peace where there isn't any, to abolish hatred in this world, to release the suffering and the dissension cycle of this planet. That is what I'm here to do. And that is what I will do. And before I came in, I was shown absolutely everything that would be, some detail by detail by detail, and others just more of a, this is the destiny path. This is what this looks like. This is what you will encounter. These are the resistances. This is what will be shared. This is what will be embraced. And so to come here already with great knowledge of what will be, what is now, what the future holds is a great blessing. So I already knew, and when I came in, there were some witnesses and I told them, this is what will happen. This is when it will happen. This is how it will happen. Some of the who's, but mainly how, we would be encountered, how this world would embrace us, and then who and how there would be resistance and what that would look like and what that could be. And why we came in, why I came into this vessel and not another vessel. Why this one? There's so many reasons for that. And we're writing a book about all of this. We are sharing and disclosing so much that is going to hopefully create a beautiful wholeness for everyone that reads it and experiences something so deep within themselves that awakens that is ancient and that is beyond this world, thus beyond the suffering, thus beyond the pain, thus beyond the day-to-day -day perceptions of reality, to go further, to go deeper, and to trust in this incredible process of discovery. That is why I'm here. And that is why I've come. And we are so grateful. We are so grateful. Thank you. Thank you. Shakina, do you want to start? I, I loved how Sanandaji started your story. Would you like to start his story? <laughs> oh, Sanandaji. Samantaji so came in already in his original body and in the, in the soul that 
that originated already ascended already um, preordained and that also is in the star maps that's also in the astrology and he also we have so many parallels in our story in our in our sharings he also had very much one foot in uh in the physical world and another foot in in the ethereal realms but he came in with this great wisdom he came in with this great curiosity also to be able to receive information and with a great faith and knowing about God from a very, very early age. <laughs> not, not much has evolved, I must confess. <laughs> my my uh, original perception was that you know, God is within and throughout all of existence. And this is just God's play. And nothing much has changed since, <laughs> since then, to be honest. <laughs> and, you know, my, my journey... Was very empathic as a as a child very clairvoyant intuitive empathic so i could see the sort of realms within realms and i thought everyone could to be quite honest and it was actually a little bit of a um a wake-up call to realize that you know many of humanity didn't see that you know, just just didn't see that there was other spirits and there was there was tree spirits and there was different aspects within the garden that's you know were literally like fairies and that there was you know, just <laughs> different beings that were present with us and so i would i would go off and spend hours and hours and hours in the gardens in the forest and in times and my my earth parents wouldn't even know you know where i went sometimes i'd be in the bedroom and then they'd open the door and i'd be gone and i don't even know where i was gone to and they'd come back and open the door and he was right there and so it's sort of like they would have experiences where they, I would sort of just just be gone and you know my it's like that for the firstborn as well yeah mm -hmm. and, and navigating this world so much being like such that. an empath it was feeling a lot of pain around the heart you know a lot of the anguish and anger and sadness that humanity felt was pretty pretty hard to be honest to like understand what was my own stuff or what was someone else's and being a child wrapped in innocence and not really understanding too so there's a lot of you know, a lot of emotion to be honest around you know just the state of humanity and being very appreciative that had a beautiful family that was open-hearted and open-minded and was really supportive I wouldn't say you know, fully spiritually awake in this in 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 that capacity no they but are much more now though they absolutely are I mean, my, my journey has definitely catapulted theirs and yes. and us coming together was huge for them yeah and mm -hmm. and so you know i think it was around but there was never a time where i was very conscious of being in the being in the fetus for example and then coming into the physical body not knowing Oh, I'll have to grow this thing. Like looking at these tiny little legs again. and tiny little arms and like, again? I'll have to grow this thing again. Like knowing that it was, you know, quite a child, like in that response. But I, I was, there was never a time where I was, I would say there was awakening. Like there was a moment where I awakened. That, that never happened to me um, to be completely authentic. That, that there was no awakening experience. Now I've had some profound mystical experiences that have catalyzed, you know, much of, but you already came in like that, but I, which is what I shared. Yeah, but I but I wouldn't I wouldn't say that those those mystical experiences were different from the mystical experiences that I would have, you know, in in my um you know childhood as as well. And so around I think around 10 years old was was the time where there was this sort of catalyst to want to learn more how to master healing because I just really wanted to help people. That was like one thing that had always been in this life was sort of this sort of peace counselor, sort of trying to keep the peace with it, with others and for others. Um, and and so healing was an idea that that could help, that could really help people. 
Um, if I learned how to really know how to do healings or or facilitate healings, and I mean, this is a 10 year old. So it was just like, just need to open their hearts and put light in their hearts and bring the light out. <laughs> and everyone just needs to love everyone else and the world will be better. <laughs> so that catalyzed, um, you know, a healing journey of learning, learning about energy medicine and energy healing and became like a master healer at 14. 14. And I had, and I had like at 14 years old, my friends were like in their fifties in their sixties in their seventies, they were like mediums or clairvoyants or, or yeah, healers of different degrees. And, and yeah, it was interesting. Like, and he still had, of course, friends that were, that were around his age group, but he never fitted in. Like he just and never felt like this world was right. And so like, they got this all backwards mm -hmm. and the schooling system was really weird. He just didn't understand how this, there was this regurgitation of needing to, to, to learn something and regurgitate that. And he just knew like, none of this is going to help, help me um, in, in my life. He knew that I had to, I had to travel the world and I had to, I had to, save because you need this thing called money in life to basically do things and so that was his focus was like to get save save enough to then eventually travel and so he did and there was this moment where he he'd been a a, a youth a youth counselor and he went to university and studied psychology and then i i learned and just knew that the people that were teaching us didn't really know really what they were talking about. I just didn't really feel that a textbook could really give you the experience that you needed in order to know the spirituality of someone's condition. And then I had this meditation one time and I see, it was seen like this, these beautiful mountains. Um, and I was just feeling this calling to, to, return to these mountains and then I end up leaving I end up selling all my possessions and and leaving mm -hmm. my family and traveling at like around 20 20 years old 22 actually and then just had a backpack and just wandered and and I come from my mother's side is my maternal side is uh, First Nation Australian Aboriginal and the Nanunjeri Wadunjeri people, and that's sort of like the the ocean, the ocean tribe of the whale people, the whales and the dolphin people, and so that's there's always been this this dream time of walkabouts. So it's been in my blood, walkabouts, and to walk to walk the land barefoot and travel the grids, walk the song lines, remember the songs of the many tribes, of the many ancient ones, and so that was always there um, as a as a sort of a catalyst and I did but I didn't walk country I walked the entire world and I went to many different countries like you know 50 60 70 countries just would walk and I would just immerse be, yourself in the culture yeah and just remember a lot like I remembered going to certain places and meditating and just going to caves going to forests and remembering the, the other lifetimes I had lived that had done the same thing. It's sort of like receiving this memory card and picking up a memory card and plugging it in and receiving the memories back. Of, especially in the Himalayas and Egypt. Yeah, especially through you. Himalayas, yeah. Egypt, um, also Peru, South America, um, you know, Central America. Um, but yeah, mainly mainly India, a lot of India and, and definitely the Middle East and Egypt. Um, so then I would just remember these 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 sacred these sacred processes that the human body goes through, and I was so focused and dedicated on yoga and inner alchemy. I was like just obsessed mm -hmm. with internal alchemical processes of how each organ is connected to a, a planetary system and how that planetary cycle influences the cycles within this microverse. So my my focus was always on the the how the microverse, this human organism, is literally the measurement of the universe, and everything in the universe is within the human body, and it's all inside you. and And I just was just so passionate um, about about discovering. And so I'll go into meditation and be full absorbed in samadhi, and I'll just be 
just gone. And around around um, early early twenties, I think it was around twenty three. It was only a year like into travel. I was I was so immersed. I was just in this full transcendental state. I wasn't eating food wasn't sleeping, wasn't drinking water because I, not because I didn't want to, it's just because I couldn't. I was just in this state of perpetual bliss. I just, I, I became like a a, long period of time. Yeah. Just for a few days. I became like a wet noodle (laughs) and I was just like completely immersed by a blade of grass. Yeah. I remember like walking out on the blade of grass, like on grass and I would put my, it's like my, my feet on the grass and I just all of a sudden just morph into grass and I'd feel all the, all the fibers of the grass and all the roots and the, and the, the soil. And I just could feel the water and the moisture of the entire environment. I was just like, just melted into grass and just became grass for two days. And then I would go sit, sit next to a tree and I'll just be, just stare at this incredible tree of how its entire root systems is connected to every other tree and how the leaves are an extension of the roots and how that tree connects to that tree and how everything was just interconnected. I was just, I was just in rapture. I was just in this blissful state. I was as useful as a, as a, as a log, as a wooden log. (laughs) I wasn't really of any use. (laughs) I was just immersed. Oh, your frequency and consciousness is very useful. (laughs) And I was just, just not practically. Yeah. There was no practicality of of any, any aspect of me at all. (laughs) And so there was this, yeah, it was the catatonic. The body was like catatonic after being so immersed in samadhi, going through savikalpa samadhi. And I had had knowledge of you know yoga, so I knew I knew that through the immersive experience of the totality of reality and everything is truly bliss. Everything is sat chidananda. Everything truly is the unfoldment of the one thing, mm-hmm. and then going to a point of no return through nirvana near kalpa samadhi where it's just transcended even animation of creation just just saw and was just lost to myself just completely gone it it took it took a long time to sort of come back to the body i i, I remember that choice of like do i even want to stay here and then I could just go and the body would just, you know, just detach and I would just completely be gone and return to the, to the all that is already here. So I was also, when I came back into the, the body, I was like, well, there's no difference between that and this. It's all actually one thing, but why don't anyone else know that there's this incredible bliss inside you that you can experience. And it's the most profound joy and treasure of all creation, like you are the bliss of God. Like you literally are that. Why doesn't anyone and know why that? does no one know this? And so I just I felt inspired to just share this and share that there is a process that you that unfolds in your biology where everything interconnects and interrelates to everything else. And essentially you return back to what you've already been, which is the source of love. And that that happens very very continuously and it was like it took me like seven years to be quite honest to same. sort of like come same yeah it was exactly there's a lot of parallels <laughs> oh and the parallels that you've shared about your about your first born yeah. are identical to the parallels of my first born. and you know we don't really even talk up to each other about our, our lives we don't even really share stories about our lives so much so sometimes when we we do hear each other's story. It's like, oh, really? That happened to you too? <laughs> word for word, piece by piece. Yeah. So, so it's the disappearing was always fun. Yes, especially if it happened in someone else's house. <laughs> What's going on? Yeah. So I think mm-hmm. a deepening. So it was the veils. They just couldn't see the frequency change and the playing, um, going into the realms and the portals. Kids yeah. do that very well if they. Yeah. If definitely. if they know how. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they, and even if they don't know how, they just do it. <laughs> That's true. Children are completely magical. And so I think what happened in my childhood was just a deepening what happened in my early 20s. Um, and then, you know, it took me a while to sort of come back into this this body and sort of animate it and learn learn its needs and then to sort of create 
I was wild, to be honest. I was completely wild. I like went into my bank accounts and just like took every single cent out of the bank accounts. Like, oh, there's fun tokens, and just was giving it all to the homeless. And I would give out my possession. I'll take my clothes take off clothes all and off give and it to give homeless it. people. Mm-hmm. Then take their clothes and put their clothes on and just purify their karma for them. I was just playing like with this beautiful fun toy we call the world, and just going to to yeah. to help everywhere which I could. It was just I was wild to be honest and then you know I wild with love yeah wild, wild with, with unconditional with, giving with a light a light of love it's so moving <laughs> and you know from from that journey I I started I, I didn't do that by the way <laughs> <laughs> just so you know that's not a parallel I did not take my clothes off and give them to the homeless right in front of me <laughs> no I, I'm probably, probably a little bit different probably the only one that probably did something like that okay. but but I um I would I would also you know coming back to my my earth parents I because all my memories lock left like I had no recollection that I had a mother that I had a had an earth father I had a had a had had like siblings I had family like there was no ability to think like thinking wasn't something that just happened in fact there was no awareness of thoughts of object or subject there was, it was just all just one thing so to to help retrain the mind to actually string a sentence together was an effort to be quite honest like to be really honest like it it took some time to really work this thing out to how to use it but not let it use you if you know what I mean it, to, to let it to run right away that with itself to have mastery of to the be mind. the master of it and not allow it to be the master of you and it was quite difficult to sort of come back into the sort of family not just having this absolute love but that love was not subject to a family member it was like just love for everything and everyone and then sort of oh do you remember this no yes. <laughs> oh but when no, when, no. when this happens not really like images and photos was the only way that I remember I actually even had a family because I had a phone and I was like oh what's this thing and then I went through images and then those messages and I had to like rediscover my life it was sort of like having amnesia almost but not because of any incident besides just dissolving the personality complex dissolving the whole personality that we pay so much attention to that just sort of left and there was just there's just love left, and and I just remember that everyone's this though, and then and then it, yeah, it was like a seven year process, and just just learning how to adapt in this world again, and then from that, I just wanted to teach and help, and 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 that's what we're doing, and and the biggest biggest catalyst was you know meeting Shakina Mar again. You know, I was in a period of my life where I was actually living in Ibiza, Spain. On the north side of the island, which was really spiritual part of the island, you know, really, really sacred and quiet. And, and I was in Avalon at the time. Yeah. And one of like a mutual friends, like said to Shahina Ma, you need to meet every single time I, I speak to you. I remember this one person that you have to, you have to connect with. And so she was like, well, really interesting. I'm not really interested in meeting anyone, to be honest. <laughs> but, oh, and but, it was because so many times people would say, oh, oh do you know this person or you remind me of this this teacher or this master oh, yeah okay that's lovely I can feel their heart and they're beautiful and I I felt but there was never a yes I need to go do that or this feels it, I was moved and I'm moved now only only by the momentum of of God of mother father God that movement so anything else that doesn't feel like that or look like that is likely not going to happen but luckily <laughs> there was some work to be done because uh, yes, this island was. was um there's Espedra, which is the third most magnetic portal on the entire planet which is where a lot of ships actually dock in and fill up their their resource battery and a lot of a lot of activity um you know intergalactic and cosmic activity happens on this it happens to be this planet and so you know shakina Ma knew that she had to go you know, just for a day or so yeah it was given a window of time the window was no longer than three days two is the the perfect time and that I was going to be opening a portal in a very significant place now this is work that I had been doing now for many years and I say I um because I had already come I had already started my entry this is between the like 10 10 10 and 2017 yeah mm-hmm. yeah 
And so I had already, I was already doing this work, walking around the, the, the earth barefoot, picking up the codex of information, working with the grids, working with the sky grids and the earth grids, um, and, and in the luminal planes, bringing that down in, in, into the earth to hopefully years and years and years down the, down the road, there could be a significant difference in basically preparing all that is happening right now. And I was, at, I was at a very interesting time of my life when actually Shekinema came as well is because I was at that stage where I was letting everything go and leaving Ibiza, I just ended a relationship and was going to the Himalayas and taking a, a, a bunch of students to actually trek through uh, the Annapurna ranges of of Nepal and 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 India, and so when so Shakina Ma literally comes for this one day, she's in this pool house um, that I was that was one of the properties that I had at the time, and I didn't know, but I went to the, the pool house and there was this you know, beautiful goddess um, there, and I was like, oh hey, ha hello, yeah, how are you? And and, and then I believe. It was the day that we um, that that happened. We went for a drive, and I heard her sing, and her voice just like it awakened something inside my heart. And I just started crying. I was like, "That's," I didn't didn't. There was nothing like romantic or anything. There was nothing. There was just this this purity, and this, and and I just I, I said I looked at her. I said, "Thank you for coming. Like, thank you so much. Like, for being here." just I just want to honor and appreciate I know I know who you are as much as I I can know at this moment I know the purity of who you are and I just want to really thank you and that was that was a moment and then I the last thing I said was I was leaving like literally the next day to go to the, the Indian I had my backpack again and like the, the whole possessions thing like letting that go and renouncing all that and 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 then there was this one other potential, which was Egypt, where there was talk about going and returning back to Egypt. But I had no idea if I would even do that. But I said to Shakina Ma, like, I'm, I'm going to the Himalayas. I might go to Egypt. I might not. But if you would like to come, it would be an honor to, to have you join us. Um, but I don't know if I'm actually going to go, actually, because I'm going to the Himalayas and I'm and I'm renouncing the world. Yeah, I'm just sort of going to be a, again. a feather in the breeze again. <laughs> and just you know, see see what happens. And then, so I did. I left, and you know, I left. And but but in between all of this is when I was in Avalon, I had heard uh, very clearly that I would be going to Egypt in the next few months. And my question was always because I was so used to traveling all alone am I traveling alone this time and the answer was yes but um you won't be alone alone for long and at that time your entire world will be essentially as it needs to be and this is when the transformation happens yeah and so I I went to the Himalayas and I I, I trek down yeah. upon the ranges and it was beautiful and it's just then i went to to over to india from nepal and I just walked up the ganga and would meditate in caves and just just bathe in the ganga bathe in the ganga too. just do a morning ganga wash and freezing and, and freezing, freezing cold but it was so delightful do my to my kriya to my yogi i was just just a yogi basically just traveling nomadically and and then I was meditating one day in a cave and it was like really nice and dark. It was a really good cave. And this bright light source sort of came in and I was like. Distraction. That's that's a distraction. Like I just sort of looked up and looked away and I said, oh, I just got to go deeper. And then maybe it's just, you know, just trying to, I'll just go deeper. And then there was, there was just something calling me to, to look up. And so I did and I saw I didn't I didn't recognize it was Shakina Ma distinctively because there was so much light. She was just sort of hovering in her light body form. And and I sort of like recognized that same familiar connection that was was for that one day or for a few hours when she came to Ibiza. And in that moment I I sort of knew 
that there's something to be done here. There's a there's work, there's service to be done here. And yeah, it was I remember looking down at you with this endearment. It was just this endearment, this this beautiful endearment of I shall be here waiting for you. <laughs> We have work to do. Yes. And and one of the main reasons I went to the Himalayas as well was to be with Baba G, because Baba G was um one of my, you know, just a, a beautiful mentor um in, in my life and a presence that that had really guided uh, a lot of the remembering of of many different sciences and processes that I was here to to teach. And Baba G shared that. It was my time to to hold the mantle, to to hold the sacred sciences, the immortal path, and and to teach that. And so he laughed he at me. Talk actually, much. He, yeah, no, this was just by pure transmission. He, yeah. it, there's no like, I mean, Baba G might smirk. Yes. <laughs> he might like look at you and smirk, but he won't really say words. I mean, I think he said in the in the entire time of mm -hmm. ever being with him, like probably like sentences. Yeah, like one or two sentences mm -hmm. that's, that's it. That's he, he just he just he just he just doesn't but um, those sentences are libraries of information definitely definitely so anyway he he laughed and was just Come pointed on. back like no your your role in this lifetime is definitely to be in the world you don't you're not here to to renounce and to you're not to, to be in the caves this time <laughs> so i was like and so i just sort of laughed at myself and end up going to egypt and it happened to be that the same day that we arrived together like it was five days before this was not pre-planned at all but i didn't even know if actually shakina would even go to the egypt i was just sort of a passing sentence of saying you know i'm going i might be going to egypt be great if you can come be on an honor um, but i don't even know if i'm going to go <laughs> but i feel that you need to go to egypt so i knew that for her but i didn't sort of want to look at it for myself <laughs> until she you know she reminded me with her presence um, in the cave in the Himalayas, and so I did. I went to, I went to Egypt, and we happened. I arrived in the morning, and she arrived in the evening. I remember being in the lobby actually, and uh, and at the manor house, yeah, that manor house, which was like the closest resort next to um, the main, the main, the Great Pyramid, the Great Pyramid, Lisa. and it's a gorgeous lobby. Um, and I remember just, I turned around and. To the door she walked in it was like that moment of this going oh wow like i just it was just this and wow. so it begins so it begins <laughs> like i was just wow and wow <laughs> and so and then we you know we just spent time together and the veils of different lifetimes began to dissolve and dissolve and dissolve and there was this this pinnacle moment probably like a week into it where we heard very distinctly that we it's had time to, to do the ritual do the, which you know so well. Yeah, and so we did. We did a foot bath, a uh, foot ointment, and a certain body anointment, and did a ritual. And that was, what, that was the last part. And our yeah, our mm -hmm. bodies like altered and morphed just slightly, just slightly into different lifetimes. It was like the veils dropped and just sort of looked at each other and. Bald. bawling our eyes out we were both like, hysterical crying you, know, you can imagine like you're the love of all your lifetimes that has has returned to you and it was so moving it was like you know just truly so touching that we had returned to each other again and we our memories sort of came back and it was just this like wow these worlds collided in such a beautiful way and we remembered that we we're already married and we remembered that we came here and we made a promise to each other that we'd find each other. And in that moment, we had fulfilled that promise. And it's, it was so, yeah, it was so really moving. And to be able to like spend our life together in this, in this way, it's like so, so beautiful. And I remember when I was on my solo journey, and even before that, I even remember in my teenage years that so there was certain, certain psychics would say like, you have a partner that's coming in and and they described Shakina Ma to a T. And in that moment, it was sort of like this, there's just a profound remembrance 
of all these lifetimes we had ever lived just come back to this moment and now we get to live with each other in service like just to share our love that we that we are that we have to humanity it's like it's just the greatest thing ever and so there's nothing there's nothing really else to say but we we continued our marriage um vows that we remembered and we went to sacred places and we and we shared those vows we renewed those vows so many times in different places in in egypt in jordan Um, in israel in avalon yeah Wow. There's so much more. We could be here for days and days and days and days. It's such a beautiful story. And I feel so honored that you're sharing it with us, with our audience today. And I think we're all a little bit speechless. I'll turn it over to my partner, Deborah, here. Uh, it's it's so inspirational to um, hear your human story and non-human story and all of it and how it evolves you to where you are now, where you can show share so much with all of us. And uh, just everything you've shared, I surely understand the depth and the depth and the depth of what you have to share and and the amazing experience of your love and your awareness and your commitment to spirit and your commitment as we've shared to the ascension process happening now and assisting all of us and all of us all of humanity towards this you know it's just really really special so thank you and um i want to ask a few more questions you know because this is up close and personal and we're going to go even a little deeper um And uh, obviously, you've accomplished so much in your spirit due to many lifetimes and past of of gathering and evolving in spirit. And some people might look at you and say, are you gurus? (laughs) Because there's kind of this traditional concept in, I think, the old paradigm of the guru that comes and you follow the guru and you do whatever they say and you know, some people might project that on you, but um, that's not what I've experienced or what I hear from you. And people who only get, don't get this depth of understanding that you've just shared with us and so much more that you continue to share. Um, Maybe you can talk a little bit about that. Um, that We're really not here to be gurus or you can share about that. Yeah, absolutely. (laughs) So, Putting us into any category, um, any category at all, we can fit many, many categories. We can equally defy those categories at the same time. <laughs> but I feel that that's something that's important to share. But, you know, the word guru, first of all, the word guru for us has a deep significance and a deep reverence that goes along with it, a true, a true guru, um, one who... <laughs> a Satguru, one who is truly, truly bringing their students, their sannyasis to, from darkness to light. And and that is what the word guru means. It means from darkness into light. And so in that way, do we do that for our students? We know we do. But we wouldn't, you know, because we're always here to redirect you back to yourself to yourself and you know to flip the paradigm like we know that in the west like there's been a lot of gurus per se that have taken that title and haven't truly deserved it and haven't lived away and there's been a lot of authority figures that have taken people for a riot and so there's a lot of woundings around yeah. having any type of teacher or authority figure or anything around that because there's a lot of makes us really sad yeah and coming out of the Kali Yuga there's a lot of there's a lot of people that have not been integrity in integrity and haven't been integral and and have literally taken people's free will and told them to do things against their their will but from antiquity it was the highest honor to find a true teacher yes it was to find a true teacher that you could literally go all the way like the 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 parents would like literally want to give their 
their children to the gurus because they know that they if, would beg they would please you know be so is my child worthy to be able to have such a teacher yeah but now we're in a different age you know we're in a different time and and that that word has a lot of stigma around it because of the the misuse of the the sacred responsibility um that that many have have just yeah. monetized and have you know, fleeced and and the people and and have hurt and have hurt the people. Like there's many, there's a lot of karma around that. And so we have great compassion for for people that feel like you know, I don't want a guru. I'm my own guru. I'm my own teacher. Like I don't I don't want that. Yeah, absolutely. In truth, you are. You know, if we look at the word guru, like G U R U. So you are. <laughs> you know, of your own very you are you. So, and that inner guru, that inner teacher, that's what it's it's about. But, but to have a true teacher that is an embodiment of that, that just brings that out of you. That was the whole role to bring out the darkness of ignorance, of error, into the light of realization, into the light of truth. And we're in a time where there needs to be enlightened leadership there needs to be positive reinforcement from a from leaders that aren't not aren't leading in 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 a way of of controllership they're they're leading from truth and allow allow truth to lead and so for us we're here to empower everyone you you are love you are the truth you you are that but sometimes you don't remember that sometimes you don't act accordingly to that the teacher the student and the teachings are meant to be one they come together as one but that's when it's a full the full realization is dawned and there's no longer any deviation no and for someone to say they are their own guru or right now there's a lot of people saying oh they they are source oh i am source they are source fair enough okay at the depths of the truth beyond form and into formlessness and even beyond the preconception of what that is that is correct Mm -hmm. Who is still suffering if you have judgment if you have victimization if you do not truly live the life of virtue if you are looking at youtube channels if you are trying to piece things together if you are still complaining in any way shape or form and it goes the list goes on and on there's and a, on there's still a little bit on. further to walk <laughs> You know, to, to walk a little bit further. And it's okay. Like, that's beautiful. The, the, the journey of awakening, the awakening journey, the ascension journey is amazing. It's incredible. Walk it to its fullness. And yeah. when it comes to you know, being, being a teacher, we're just love. You know, whatever we need to be, we'll be that in yes, a way of we'll love. So we can uphold humanity. And we can serve. We're not, we're not here to be categorized as anything because no one is. You know, as soon as you categorize yourself to think that you're this or that or another thing, you've just limited yourself. We know our role. And so we know our role. We, know we, we have we have a, a, a teacher role. We have we are like spiritual parents to many of our beautiful community members. We're here to 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 purify some of the the ways that the parental conditioning was really thick and and really intense there's a lot of trauma around mother and father woundings and a lot of the woundings stem from that very cause where we're here just to love we're just we're just we're just love and and so are you like everyone actually is everyone truly is that but sometimes there's there's a difference between the true reality of that and the actual experience of your everyday, your mind, your body, your animations, the way that you experience, the way that you uphold yourself and others, there's sometimes a disconnect between that. And only you know that. And so- You only get to that space when there are no questions and thus there are no answers. Then from that space of absolute stillness and silence, you can then say that you are your own guru, but you see, you wouldn't. And, and to you be, wouldn't say it to be honest because you wouldn't need to i'm, wanna... I'm so grateful for all the teachers that have ever touched my life to be truly honest like i've i think we're all truly being taught from nature is a f- profound teacher i would also say that the teachers like Grandma G, who was a very significant saint, the, the great one of the world's greatest healers that the world will never know. She was a beautiful, beautiful teacher. But 
and you know, Baba G, for example, beautiful teacher, wonderful teacher, but they all, they didn't teach me things that I didn't know. They just sat with me and the truth, the emanation of truth, that was the biggest, the greatest teaching. So truth is the teacher. And when you can speak truth and you are the embodiment of truth, then that emanates. Yeah. You can feel that that will resonate deep inside of you and awaken a part of you that has been dormant. Yeah. So we hope that answers your question. Yeah. It, did. <laughs> it does. And what you just said is really true for me. Why I love being with you and your teachers, because it reminds me who I am and the greatness of what I can keep moving forward. Yeah. So you definitely lead the way, you kind of shine the light down the path for me to walk forward in. And so I really appreciate that. And I have another question. One thing that fascinates me about you is um, how much you accomplish, how much you offer, how abundant you live. Um, on a, on a level of levels, it's really um, fifth dimensional consciousness where you're able to manifest a lot but every time I see you you're so peaceful you're so calm you're so beautiful you're so you know in your presence um just I think these are the superpowers we're all meant to be able to accomplish where we're in such divine order that things manifest around us and we're able to co-create by aligning with each other and and manifest and so of course, this is another topic that could take days, but just give us a little preview of, um, of what it's like and, and where you're at to be able to have the beautiful center that you have in Ashland, open up another center, all the courses you have um, and, and everything you're meant to do. So uh, for all of us that um, want to also be able to master our 3D reality in a fifth dimensional level, like, what can you give us a little kind of bullet points about what that's like? <laughs> yes, well, a lot of service, you know, a lot of work and a lot of service, you know, we, we, we live our life dedicated every to, breath, yeah, every, we're just, we're just, transmission. that is our fun, right? So when you love everything that you do, you're not really doing, doing it. That's, that's the secret, right, is to, to love what you do and do it with that love. And it's like it, you can accomplish many things. Now, there's a that frequency is also a, a, a really important aspect to all of this. Yes, of course. And that's 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 the big thing. It's like when you can raise your frequency to a certain point, you can manifest, you can materialize, you can create things in a very, very beyond time beyond the limited construct of what time is associated but there is still a linearity to time like recording you know this moment for example you know spending time with you all um to to, to build a home to build a space to to build out there's a there's a lot of things that 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 happen that are practical things but most most important when when your when your mind is centered with your heart so your heart and mind are one and your action and your words are in alignment with your mind and heart being in oneness, that can move mountains. That is what true prayer is. That is the true, true definition of prayer. That is and, true definition and, of prayer, and, where you lay down your consciousness alongside and you allow everything to uplift you from that space. Now, we don't do that because we, we've already embodied that, but that is the practice that is the process and there's one aspect that's really important that highlights this really well is it has to be in your divine design it has to be in your divine alignment so you can't try it go against the forces you have to find that purpose you have to find that passion inside and sometimes that's doing something yeah. by yourself on a solo journey and sometimes it's actually helping others are helping a greater greater cause but it's always service and so when your mind and your heart are one and when your actions and your words are also one and when your destiny your your actual purpose the purpose that you came here your own dharma it's it's always service it's always service orientated when that is in alignment that's when the universe opens up to you that's when it's everything the only way that it can and that that's when 
all that's needed will unfold. And when you can help as many lives as you possibly can, and it doesn't need to be large crowds and large groups of people. It can just be one person, but in that one person, you see all of humanity. When you know that every life that you're touching is humanity. That's right. That, 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 that connection to, to the sincerity of your approach, the posture, the right posture, the righteous use of action, the right use of righteousness, the right use of your energy. When you don't exhaust your emotions you don't allow your mind to just waste all this energy you can really do what you're here to do and it's this this there's love but it doesn't mean that you don't you don't work you don't serve you don't there's not hours yeah you, you do it but it's you do it differently you, you and yes there's certain practical things to create templates and structures around in order for things to occur and a beautiful beloved team and yeah we have family. a beautiful team as well and a family that that support and help in, in many ways and, and it so, keeps growing and growing and you and know growing. But, but for example just at a practical level we're in the mo moment of where we're building out this new this new program it's it's it teaches the whole interconnectivity of the biology and how divinity manifests and it evolves to the, to the templates oh it does so much um, more than that and that's just the tiniest first bit of it but anyway my yeah. point of sharing this was that yeah you know i I woke up, didn't really go to sleep, to be honest. So I was up at like 2 a.m., you know, just did a morning ritual meditation and went straight into recording and was recording, you know, until like noon the next day. And I just looked at the time. I was like, oh, wow. I just thought I was doing it for an hour and it was all already 12 hours. So there's, there's, there's definitely an ability that we can't speak into because you have to be at a certain way to actually learn how to, change time bend time and it's possible but we do a lot of time bending <laughs> and we do a lot of work all over the world at the very 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 early hours of the morning and in our dream space when we do go into transmission and yeah. it's almost like a dolphin sleeps with one in, in two different awarenesses yeah. but we mm -hmm. but yeah it's the practical aspect is that we we time bend <laughs> we do and I can totally relate because I know when I'm in a, long, a huge manifestation process, it's right on divine mission, it's right in divine alignment, and then everything falls into place. And you can put an attention out and then it comes in that door like spirit and your higher self and the ascended masters have already kind of handled that for you and then it comes in. So it's great to hear your perspective, and it's given me even more insight about that, and I appreciate that. And I have one more question that is really the bottom line that um, I think is so beautiful about you that I'd love for you to transmit uh, when I hear you speak about it. And um, that's the love frequency. Like really love is the bottom line of it all, because in terms of being in divine mission, you're also in the love frequency, and that juices everything up and because that you know it's all connected with service and all of that so i'd love you to give your transmission of why love is so important now and it's really kind of what it's all about and where we all want to get to yeah absolutely you can't create without love you can't create anything sustaining without love love is the force love is the creation love is the creator, love is all that can create. Anything that will be sustaining, that must be its seed. Yeah. Yeah, love is the ever eternal. And so coming from that space, you know, the, the, the issue is, is that people think they have to get to love. They forget that they actually already are love. And then they, the one places all these conditions around love, all these perceptions, because love has to feel a certain way. We're not love, talking about human lo love. Love is, is a way that it, it, it looks, it's romantic, it's a connect. But that's, that's, a, that's a human misperception of what yeah. love is. Lo love, like true, unconditional love, is spirit, is the Holy Spirit, is God. It is all of existence, it is consciousness, it is pure awareness. Love is that one unifying and divine presence that 
interconnects all, not just us, but all, like every single blade of grass. Everything is an animation of love. And when you, you can't learn this because you are this, you have to realize that. And when and live it, when you live in accordance to that, when you when you come from the overflow of that love inside, and you can't have judgments, you can't you, you can't have any 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 projections. You, you can't go, oh, this person is good, but this person isn't, and and this 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 agenda and that agenda, and like you, you can't see the world in division. You have to see the truth of it all. Now, it doesn't mean you have to like every personality. It doesn't mean you have to like every situation that's happening on the earth. But love is the ability to even experience life. The fact that there is the full spectrum of war to absolute bliss, you know, that whole spectrum of experience, that's only because of love. Now, how do you live in bliss that helps transcend the duality? Well, that's when you're not in friction with life. Bliss means you're on a smooth journey. You know, dukkha and sukha. This is what this is what the Buddha shared. Is that the dukkha is that that bumpy road is when things aren't happening. It's the sort of you're rubbing. There's a friction, but sukha is a smooth journey. It's the, the easy journey. You're living in the flow, and each one of you have experienced that. You've lived in a state where, wow, everything's just flowing, and you're seeing the synchronicities. And, you, and when you when you live in that that love, that presence, that divine grace that is true love. When you are absorbed into that, when you fully absorb into that, and that, that, that takes training to train the mind, to train the emotions, to train the body instrument to become fully absorbed into that one ultimate truth that is love. When you are fully adept in love, you are fully adept in that truth and you have allow the mind to become fully satiated with the whole spectrum and gamut of experience. And you realize that there is only one truth. There is only one source of that love. And when you tap into that and you are absorbed as that, that's what freedom is. Freedom. There's, there's no longer a personal problem ever again. That that's really what happens. You, there's, yes, there's skills, there's abilities, and there's higher, higher, uh, functions of of all the gifts. There's many gifts that can happen in the high sense perceptions and different clear senses, the clairvoyancies, and all the different aspects. But that, but but really, the ultimate thing is full liberation, full moksha, which is that truth, love, God only is. The world is an illusion. Only God is real. Only love is real, and the world is God. The world is love. Because none of this can actually exist without that. And so when you, that simple notion of knowing God is to love God with all your heart and to love God with all your heart and all your soul is to know God. Like God is the grand orchestration of the divine, grand orchestration of the divine, G-O-D, the generator, operator, destruction, that, that ultimate dharmic law, that unfolds everything in its perfect perception of perfect alignment when you can bring your perception of duality into unity and see it all and you can do both you can you can focus in on the daily tasks and still have a love unfolding and you can see it all interconnected mm -hmm. it's not separate and so how to live it it's harder not to live it that's the that's the thing is you it's, waste it's, so much more energy trying to go against the true nature of that love yeah so much it's so exhausting to try like just tune in for a moment like how hard is it to truly try to be angry try to be upset against someone try to project it doesn't feel good in your body in your biology love is this rejuvenation that happens you when you feel it you, you just your whole body like changes and rearranges all your dna starts activating because you're tapping into the very source of all existence as an extension of that you know, and eventually, when one fully realizes, is fully enlightened, fully in perfect wholeness, is experienced moksha, full liberation, all your DNA, all the karma just unwinds itself because it's meant to be easy. It's when you try to make it hard, that becomes a problem. When you try to not like someone, 
and you try to go, you know, I don't like this about you. I don't like that about them. I don't like this. I don't like that. It's so much energy. It's so much energy. What for? But if you just love, because forget what they're doing. What unless, they look like. And, unless it's something that you have to step into to, to make sure that you, you uphold truth and uphold because it's it could cause harm. And you have to be, you know, mm. a, a, if it's affecting you, then of course you have to you have to stand for the right use of energy. And and there's there's certain karmas there you must learn. But but also investigate why it's affecting you. Yeah, well, when someone's being beaten alive and they're being absolutely beaten and they and they can't get out of that, what what does one do? One has to one has to resort to the very instrument that's trying to get them out of that 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 state of of despair to to help someone in that time is is needed and necessary. But that's because that person that's 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 doing those actions. There's a karmic host of what brought that moment to happen. Precisely. There's, there's also that that person is deeply abusing themselves internally. And that's why there's laws in this world to help protect people. But the universal laws, there's there's never such opposites in such a way of that's a right, the righteous, the righteous use of energy is where everything's actually in harmony. And when one forgets that harmony, they are ignorant. They're ignoring that love. They're ignoring that truth. And they experience the absolute suffering from the, from the biggest catastrophes of suffering to the, to the whole spectrum of life. You know, so when someone experiences that level of suffering inside themselves, they, they hurt people, hurt people. But when they resolve that and they return to love and they realize they're not their mind, they're not their emotions, they still have to fully take responsibility for their actions. That's 101 spirituality to take full responsibility full ownership. and ownership of all actions that you've ever done. And when you do that and you resolve the conflict of the karmas and the samskaras, the scars of the soul and all the woundings, and you can love and return to forgiveness and return to that love, that can help heal all the wounds that you've been carrying from lifetime to lifetime. And it becomes effortless. It's it's a challenge to try to hurt or hinder, but it's easy to heal and be whole. And so we're just giving you extreme examples right now, but ultimately it's a lot of effort to go against the flow of love. Hmm. In a, in a moment, we're going to close with uh, Shakina Ma and Sanandaji leading a, okay. a meditative something to help us integrate all of this. But I want to really encourage everyone, this is just a homeopathic dose, truly, of the wisdom and, and an opportunity to for a unique sharing that they shared about um, the personal lives. Um, it was actually delightful watching you two listening to each other and going, oh, I'd forgotten about that. Or, oh, right, there was that, right? About your personal history. It was actually lovely to watch. Um, you know, I'm blessed. I've, since the pandemic started and Deb and I were doing Saturday Night Live, I've hosted 500 plus shows, over 500 shows. And I I have such respect for every person, every everyone who watches, every guest that's been on the show. Um, but the people that I've chosen to personally study with are the twin ray. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, many great teachers say, you know, study and be with that which you wish to become. If you wish to be more affluent, be with people that are more affluent. If you wish to be more loving, be with people that are more loving. If you wish to be sober, be with people that are sober. And I've said it before, and I'll say it again. When I grow up, I want to be a twin ray. <laughs> I really do. And so um, I am studying with them. They have a beautiful miracle mentorship program. Um, and I want to just give people two places where you can go um, to learn more. Um, their primary website is easy. It's just twinray.com twinray.com and I encourage everybody if you haven't already go there explore and and something really fun they have is a quiz just to kind of tap in and see okay where am I on the path and 
again, there's no right or wrong, no good or bad. Um, it's all God experiencing itself perfectly as each and every one of us, exactly where we are on our path. Um, but the quiz is really, really fun. And so that's one way to kind of drop in and play. Um, and then the other one, and I'm going to put this, uh, this link, you can find it if you scroll around, but I'll make it nice and easy and put the link in right now for our chat box. Um, and this is what they call the four supreme pathways. Um, oh, wow. And it's a, again, it's a beautiful place to start and also it just embodies the teaching, you know, the four pathways being divine love divine service, divine alchemy, and divine truth. Uh, because I am part of the Miracle Mentorship Program and I get to take these classes and courses with them. What's interesting is they have wisdom on so many levels. Oh, this is the wisdom about relationship. This is the wisdom about alchemy. These are like master alchemists. Oh, this is the wisdom about astrology. Oh, this is the wisdom about the nature of reality. Um, they truly are accessing the wisdom that I guess is available to all of us because it's not what they learned in books, it's what they learned how to access. So I just invite everyone to really drop in and learn from these amazing beings that we're so blessed to have in our world and that I'm so grateful to have uh, as a big part of the Global Peace Tribe. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you, beloved Scott. <laughs> and I'll turn it over to you to just kind of whatever you, however we can integrate all of this through your a meditation or a, a sharing would be beautiful. I wanna say just a, a couple of more things and one of the one of the beautiful things about Sanandaji, well, it's just they're infinite, but his his heart, the heart of the Christ, is radiant in every single moment and present, and every breath he has is about service. Every breath. Every breath. And about love and about teaching. And about bringing, bringing the children of light home to their hearts, and, and that's that's what we're here to do. And when we were in Jordan together, um, Sanandaji was so impassioned and, and passionate about the inner alchemy. So he wanted to start to tell me about the inner alchemy. <laughs> yes. What happened? Yes. No. It was it was it was wonderful to be able to to share you know the, the divine sciences um, with with Shekinima and she's the only one that I've ever met that's like oh yeah yeah no I I, I know of this actually this is how this happens and so she would actually tell me the same sciences that I was like sharing with her and I'm like oh perfect yeah she, she she's she's got she's got it <laughs> so because I went through it and that, and that we was... both, everything we teach we've actually gone through yeah every process every everything we teach we've actually gone through it and that was one of the, the sweet moments yeah it was definitely it definitely was and and that's and that's the thing is that it's about learning it until you become it like it's beautiful what scott scott shared it's like if you want to become what what do you want to become in, in your in your life in your experience like feel that frequency and that's that's the role of you know truly our role is to harmonically induct harmonically induct any beloved that has an open heart and open mind to receive to to the, that frequency to bring out all of that and so spending the last moment to integrate all that we've shared you know the answer is always going to return back to love and, and love can be it can be the most absolute freeing and it ultimately is but it can also bring you to your Tune. knees it can, it can bring you deep within and if at any time that you've you've mm -hmm. you've hurt others or because of wounding because of conditioning and you know, love is that gentle reminder to say you know what did you do did you do that with love what was your intention what was with your, those what words was your intention with that and so every action that you've ever experienced will never go unseen because you have to see it 
you have to go through everything that you do. So when you seed your world with love, when you seed your relationships with love and you give love, that's what returns to you. That's just a simple way, not so you get something from it, but you remember that what you sow, you shall reap. And if you sow anything that is not in love, then you will reap those, those projections. It is the fruit that will come to bear. Yeah. And so the greatest fruit of the Holy Spirit, the greatest tr- fruit of your heart, the greatest fruit that this life can ever offer you is that of love, is that of freedom, is that of truth. And this is all synonymous with God, with divine. And so let's now take all of that and just want to honor each one of you for, for listening and, and <laughs> sharing in sacred presence. You know, for us, we don't talk about our story. We don't, you know, we, we're going to we, 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 <laughs> There's more interest. A, so we're going to have to. I, I, talking about our story. To, to be quite honest, I have like, I couldn't, I, I'm, I'm not really here to talk about my myself. I'm here to talk about you all and the amazing, interesting, incredible beings and the potential of divinity you have waiting to manifest into your life and yet our story truly is the story of an awakening humanity and it truly is the story of a divine human and a new species and we're here to do that yes so in in and of itself it's all interconnected yeah interrelated yeah (laughs) so let's let's spend this this these last moments together on this sacred sunday the day of the sun the day of the soul the day of the light of the soul the day of the light of light of spirits this is a day to remember this is a the truth, the truth of why you came. So time to tune in. And so let's just take a moment. Closing our eyes, taking a deep breath into the heart. It all begins within. And you receive all that your heart requires, that has been shared, that uplifts you, that supports you in your journey, all that brings you home to the sacred abode of heaven within. May our spoken words remind you of the magnificence you truly are, simple, love, ultimate, love from the granular to the eternal all is that love may we you breathe in this moment breathe in the recognition that love must be put first love and only love can save your soul because it is what births your soul May we remember the unconditional love that is this life, no matter how you experience it, no matter how you feel from moment to moment, this miracle that you've been gifted, may you use this gift, this miracle that is your life to be a steward of love, to tend the garden of this glorious plain. Forgive and let live. Return back to the light of truth. To live as one, the children of the light. We call you back, children of the light. Come home, return back to the beauty of your hearts to the truth of something you know so deep within you. Release and relinquish all that has bound you through time and space and allow yourselves to truly be whole again, holy beings completed through the evolutionary journey back into the vessels, into the sacred temples, to be in service to your brothers and sisters of this earth, of this world, Feel that joy inside of you as it sparks in its creation, opening more and more and more and more. That bliss of love 
that light, let it lead you as it is within. Let it guide you through your days, through your journeys, and allow yourself to be led truly back home to the heart of God. And you feel blanketed in the holy garment of his love. May you wear it well as you go about your days. May you pray with a sincere heart to be purified in the light of love. May you meditate on the sacred question. love what love truly is what we do. and how does love show up may you always remember that love not only free you but love will return you to you the true you beyond your mind beyond your emotions beyond your perceptions beyond your condition, the perfect love. May you be a champion for love. Mm -hmm. And when you forget, may you always remember that love is the answer to all the problems that you think you have. And love is the reminder that there are no problems. Be love. Here and now and always. Blessed be. Blessed be. For you. Always. Ah. Ah. Hmm. Blessed be. As George pointed out, for those of us in the Bay Area, literally during your prayer, the sun came out. It's been raining for the last two days. And literally, he's about 50 miles north of me. And he pointed it out. And I looked, and sure enough, there's the sun coming through. <laughs> One of those. And I, I, everything you said is so beautiful. And I just want to anchor again, yes, may we all remember to be champions of love, to be a champion of love, as you demonstrate so beautifully. One more time, just a reminder, everybody, that please, if you haven't already, go to twinray.com and play, explore, enter the gates of their beautiful, beautiful home, uh, the home of their hearts, the home of their wisdom. Um, I really invite everybody to, to receive the gifts that they're offering to us. We're very, very blessed. Um, thank you so much, both of you. And we're going to get to see the Twin Ray again in just two weeks. Um, uh, Deborah and I are putting together a very special just before Christmas uh, as we enter the holy days, prepare for the solstice. We're doing a special show called Join the Planetary Ascension, featuring the Twin Ray. Uh, beloved Cornflower will be playing music along with Pamela Butters, who's a big part of the Twin Ray community. Oh, and yes. Love she was just with us in Sedona. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. The, the Global Peace Tribe Retreat and, and other amazing oh. teachers. Um, Deborah and I will be co-hosting, welcoming the Stargate people, Pragit and Julian, uh, William Henry coming back and Vivian Chavot. So definitely join us on the 17th. And also a reminder, you know, Deborah really is, I love how she said it earlier today, a connoisseur of Ascension. And she has put together a beautiful booklet, um, which is available all about Ascension tips. And I'll let her tell everybody a little bit about that. 
Yes. Um, what inspired me is just to, because of the planetary awakening now, just to explain to people the stages that we go through in this ascension process that's evolving very rapidly. And so this is very simple because things need to be simple these days because where our life is so full. So it's actually 88 tips in four different sections. And the first one is about the awakening and what people go through when they wake up outside of the matrix and realize there's a whole other world that they can live in multidimensionally with their emotional body and with community. The second stage is transmutation. And that's where you really start to go through the alchemical process of deep, deep core healing, purification, like the twin Ray talked about, and really transforming on all levels, dealing with your core wounds and your whole life begins to transform and you start to get on a magical path. The third stage is embodiment. And that's what the twin ray is talking about too, where you really embody the practice of ascension. And you, you start to open up psychically, you start to connect with your guides, you start to live and be in the fifth dimensional level more than ever. And it explains all that. And then the third one is really exciting. It's the divine human in the new earth. So that's pointing to where we're getting to once we really activate on all those levels and we're creating a whole new world and what that world is going to be. So I downloaded a lot of that, but then I had confirmations from other Ascension teachers that are all kind of seeing and pointing to the same thing with the twin ray actually teach a lot about which they call the golden age. So it's a lot in alignment with their teachings and, and other teachings, but it, it really creates a simple I, I call it a simple blueprint to your ascension journey. You just kind of go, oh, yeah, that's what's happening to me. Oh, yeah, that's what's, oh, that's what's next. So very simple. And then you go to the twin ray and other teachers for the deep dive into your own process and your own transformation. It's at ascensionnow.org. So really easy. It's free and you can just download it. So that's my gift to you all. Brilliant, Deborah. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful, beloved twin ray. And we will, as we always do on Sundays, we'll close with Omashar just wrapping it up with his beautiful music. Wow, Sanandaji and Shakina Ma, thank you so much. I, I feel you so, so, I feel you so. There's no more words than that. Thank you so much. I am blessed. We are blessed, that's for sure.
Thank you so much, beloved Omasha. Beautiful, truly. So beautiful. Thank you, Trinre. Thank you, Deborah. Thank you, Omashar. And thank you, everybody watching. And I want to acknowledge all the people watching on Facebook who we don't get to see your faces, but uh, thank you, everybody, for watching. Whether you're watching live or the recording, um, we are all awakening together. And remember, it's the Sacred Sunday show, but we can make any moment sacred just by demonstrating what the twin ray are teaching us to see the divine in all. Thank you, everybody, and we'll see you soon. Namaste. Bye, everyone. Good rest. Thank you.